can't believe it's our last day of Read Across America week. I'm so excited that we had such a great week and I have a really special story to share with you today. This was a new story by Dr. Seuss, but wait a minute, he died quite a while ago, so I wonder where that could be. I'll explain that to you when we're done reading Dr. Seuss, Hooray for Diff and Doofer Day with some help from Jack Kowalski and Lainey Smith. Dr. Seuss, Hooray for Diff and Doofer Day. I've always lived in Dinkerville. My friends all live here too. We go to Diff and Doofer School. We're happy that we do. Our school is at the corner of Dink Zuber and Dink Zot. It looks like any other school, but we suspect it's not. I think we're learning lots of things not taught at other schools. Our teachers are remarkable. They make up their own rules. Miss Bobble teaches listening. Miss Wobble teaches smelling. Miss Fribble teaches laughing. And Miss Quibble teaches yelling. Miss Twining teaches tying knots in neckerchiefs and noodles and how to tell chrysanthemums from miniature poodles. Miss Vining teaches all the ways a pigeon may be peppered and how to put a saddle on a lizard or a leopard. My teacher is Miss Bonkers. She's as bouncy as a flea. I'm not certain what she teaches, but I'm glad she teaches me. Look, look, she chirps, I'll show you how to tell a cactus from a cow. And then I shall instruct you why a hippo cannot hope to fly. She even teaches frogs to dance and pigs to put on underpants. One day she taught a duck to sing. Miss Bonkers teaches everything. Of all the teachers in our school, I like Miss Bonkers best. Our teachers are all different, but she's the differenter than the rest. We also have a principal. His name is Mr. Lowe. He is the very saddest man that any of us know. He mumbles, are they learning this and that and such and such? His face is wrinkled as a prune from worrying so much. He breaks a lot of pencil points from pushing down too hard. And many dogs start barking as he mopes around the yard. We think he wears false eyebrows. In fact, we're sure it's so. We've heard he takes them off at night. I guess we'll never know. But we know he likes Miss Bonkers. He treats her like a queen. He's always there to watch her when she's on her trampoline. There are many other people who make Diff and Doofer run. They are utterly amazing. I love every single one. Our nurse Miss Klopp knows what to do when we've got sniffles or the flu. One day I had a splinter so she bandaged me from head to toe. Mr. Plunger, our custodian, has fashioned a machine, a super zooper flooper do. It keeps the whole school clean. Our music teacher, Mrs. Fox, makes bagpipes out of straws and socks. Our art instructor, Mr. Bees, paints pictures hanging by his knees. In science class with Mr. Katz, we learn to build robotic rats. In gym, we watch as Mr. Bear hoist elephants into the air. Miss Loon is our librarian. She hides behind the shelves and often cries out louder when we're reading to ourselves. We have three cooks, all named McMunch, who merrily prepare our lunch. They make us hot dogs, beans, and fries, plus things we do not recognize. And as they cook, they sing their song, not too short and not too long. Roast and toast and slice and dice, cooking lunch is oh so nice. We were eating their concoctions, telling jokes and making noise, when Mr. Lowe appeared and howled, Attention, girls and boys! He began to fuss and fidget, scratch and mutter, sneeze and cough. He shook his head so hard, we thought his eyebrows would come off. He wrung his hands, he cleared his throat, he shed a single tear, then sobbed, I've got something to announce, and that is why I'm here. All schools for miles and miles around must take a special test to see who's learning such and such, to see which school's the best. If our small school does not do well, then it will be torn down and you will have to go to school in dreary Flobber Town. Not Flobber Town, we shouted and we shuddered at the name, for everyone in Flobber Town does everything the same. 
It's miserable in Flaubert town, they dress in just one style. They sing one song, they never dance, they march in single file. They do not have a playground and they do not have a park. Their lunches have no taste at all, their dogs are scared to bark. Miss Bonkers rose. Don't fret, she said, you've learned the things you need to pass that test and many more. I'm certain you'll succeed. We've taught you that the earth is round, that red and white make pink. And something else that matters more, we've taught you how to think. I hope you're right, sighed Mr. Lowe. He shed another tear. The test is in ten minutes, and you're taking it right here. We sat in shock and disbelief. Oh, no, we moaned. Oh, no. We were even more unhappy than unhappy, Mr. Lowe. But then the test was handed out. Yahoo, we yelled, wahoo. For it was filled with all the things that we all knew we knew. There were questions about noodles, about poodles, frogs, and yelling, about listening and laughing, and chrysanthemums and smelling. There were questions about other things we never seen or heard, and yet we somehow answered them, enjoying every word. One week later, after recess, Mr. Lowe meandered in. We'd never seen him smile before, but now he wore a grin. He soon began to giggle, then his griggle grew by half, and then it really happened, Mr. Lowe began to laugh. You've saved our school, you've saved our school, he jubilantly roared. We got the very highest score, he wrote it on the board. Miss Bonkers did some cartwheels till her face turned cherry red. She bounded up to Mr. Lowe and kissed him on the head. Hooray, hooray, she shouted. I'm so proud I cannot speak. So she did another cartwheel and she pecked him on the cheek. Ahem, ahem, coughed Mr. Lowe. You all deserve a bow. I thus declare a holiday. It starts exactly now. Because you've done so splendidly in every sort of way, this day forever shall be known as Diffin Doofer Day. And furthermore, I promise I won't ever wear a frown, for now I know we'll never go to dreary Flobber Town. Then we held a celebration. There was pizza, milk, and cake. Like everyone, I ate too much and got a belly ache. We laughed and whooped and hollered the entire school day long. Then we all sang triumphantly the Diffin Doofer song. We love you, Diffin Doofer School, we definitely do. There surely is no other school that's anything like you. You're gribbleous and you're grobbleous. Each day we love you more. You are the school we treasure and unceasingly adore. Oh, finest school in Dinkerville, the only one as well. We love you, Diffin Doofer School, much more than we can tell. You are so Diffin Dooferous, it gives us joy to say. Three cheers for Diffin Doofer School. Hooray, hooray, hooray! How this book came to be. So remember how I said that this book was made after Dr. Seuss died? Well, it has a pretty interesting history to it. Dr. Seuss had mentioned it to his publisher that he wants to write a book about a school. After his death, she asked about it and she found all of these cool drawings with little poems on them that was the start of this book. She sat with it for a little while until she had the brainstorm to have the poet Jack Perlusky and illustrator Lane Smith help out by finishing this book. I hope you liked it. It's really cool. Did you notice the original illustrations incorporated throughout that were from Dr. Seuss's sketches? And look how many times he wrote and rewrote things. It's truly what an author does. I hope you enjoyed the book as much as I did. Well, I'm a little sad that our week is over, and I hope you really enjoyed these read-alouds. Now, Different Doofer Day was all about how teachers can inspire us. I want you to be thinking of someone who works here at Linwood, and I want you to write them a thank you note or card or even just draw them something. Think you can do that for me? I thought so. I will see you around, and have a great day.